Today, we're covering everything to make Warzone smooth, from graphics and controller settings to overclocking your controller, reducing input delay, updating your controller, and tuning your NVIDIA GPU. Don't miss these crucial tips. Let's go to Warzone controller settings. I play with the controller claw grip, so if you use controller paddles, you can skip this section. Horizontal and vertical sensitivity 1.60. If your centering isn't that good, start from a lower level and gradually increase it until it feels comfortable for you. Simplified controls preset off low motor strain, preset off bumper ping, off swap L1R1 with L2R2 on if you play with claw grip. Controller vibration off. Trigger effect off. Dead zone is definitely the setting you must consider for your controller. With this, you can check your stick drift by turning on test stick dead zone. It's very important that this value is always set to zero. Adjust the values from zero to around nine until the left stick min on your controller reaches zero. If it still drifts after going past nine, it's highly recommended to switch to a new controller. Next, the left stick max is the most important setting for your rotational aim assist. According to the latest updates, using it between 60 and 70 is highly recommended. Adjust it to what works best for you. I personally think I get the best rotational aim assist at the value of 60. Just like before with the left stick min, when you test the stick dead zone, this value should appear as zero. Adjust it slightly until it becomes zero. The most important thing is that if your stick does not drift even when these values are set to zero, then it's best to leave them that way. For new controllers, it's usually not necessary to increase the left stick min and right stick min. Only adjust them if drifting occurs and only until it stops at zero. Set right stick max to 99, it's okay to leave it at that, it's not crucial. Set left trigger to zero and right trigger to zero. In the Aiming tab, under the Sensitivity Multiplier, change the ADS Sensitivity Multiplier value from 1 to 0 0.9. This will make controlling recoil a bit easier for you. Next, go to Aiming Advanced Settings. Under ADS Sensitivity Transition Timing, select Instant. Then, for the Aim Response Curve Type, select Dynamic, and then go back. Turn Target Aim Assist on, ADS Aim Assist on, and Motion Sensor Behavior off. After that, go to Motion Sensor Advanced Settings and turn off FOV Sensitivity Scaling. Now, go to the Movements tab. Select Sprint Assist and choose Tactical Sprint Assist. Drop down the menu and set the Sprint Assist Delay all the way down to zero. Set Sprint Assist Sideways to On, Sprint Assist Backward to On, Mantle Assist to Off, Crouch Assist to On, and Corner Slice to On. Select Hybrid for the Slide Dive Behavior. This is a very important setting. If you're not used to it, Practicing it will give you a good advantage in the game. Turn Automatic Airborne Mantle on, Sprint Restore on, and Parachute Automatic Behavior off. Then, set Mantle Cancels Reload to on. After that, go to Movement Advanced Settings. In the Movement Advanced Settings, under Tactical Sprint Activation, select Single Tap Run. Now, go back and go to the Vehicle Advanced Settings. Vehicle Control Mode, select Driver Control. Score Streak Vehicle Control Mode, select Driver Control. Vehicle Camera Recenter set to Off. Camera Initial Position, select Behind Vehicle. Now go to the Combat tab. Aim Down Sight Behavior, set it to Hold. Tactical Stance Activation, turn it off. Weapon Mount Activation, select ADS plus Melee. Dedicated Melee Weapon Activation, select Hold Melee. Body Shield Finishing Move Behavior, select ADS Melee to Body Shield. Armor Plate Behavior, set it to Apply All. C4 Detonation Activation, select All at Once. Equipment behavior, select hold. Manual fire behavior, select press. Then go to combat advanced settings. Not much to explain here. Just look at these settings and copy them. Now go to the graphics tab. Under display mode, change it to full screen exclusive if you're using a single monitor. If you have dual monitors, select full screen borderless. But even if you have dual monitors and you're not actively using the second one while gaming, like for live streaming or something, then Full screen exclusive is still the better option. Display monitor, select your main gaming monitor. Display adapter, select your graphics card. Screen refresh rate, you can't change this in full screen borderless mode. If you're using full screen exclusive, then set it to the highest available refresh rate. Display resolution, same as above, you can't change this in full screen borderless mode. If you're using full screen exclusive, then select your monitor's native resolution. Aspect ratio, Set to automatic. Restart shaders preloading. This option becomes important after we finish setting up everything else. I'll talk about this at the end. Display gamma. This is very important. 
If you've spent a lot of money on a gaming monitor, you must select 2.4. 2.2 is useless. Set brightness to 55. NVIDIA reflects low latency. This is also very important. Talking about this, reduced latency means you can react to situations in the game more quickly, potentially leading to better performance. I highly recommend checking what your default setting is and making sure it stays that way unless needed. To know exactly what you should select, go to the interface. Then go to telemetry and turn GPU time and CPU time on. After that, you'll be able to monitor it like this. Now start a game. Don't change anything while in the lobby. Once you're in game, if the GPU time number is higher, leave it on on. If they are tied, leave it on as well. But if your CPU time is higher, then switch it to on plus boost. Set eco mode preset to custom. VSync for gameplay, turn this off. VSync for menus, also set this to off. Next, set your custom frame rate limit to unlimited. We don't want any unnecessary caps on performance. Reduce menu render resolution. Set this to native for the best clarity in your menus. Pause game rendering. Turn this off. This helps the game keep running smoothly even when minimized. Reduce quality when inactive. Keep this off as well. And finally, focused mode. Set this to zero. All right, now let's move on to the quality tab. Here's how you should set it up. Set graphics preset to custom. We're going to tweak everything manually for the best performance. Render resolution. Set this to 100. You want to run at native resolution for the sharpest image. Dynamic resolution? Turn this off. We want consistent image quality without resolution drops. Upscaling sharpening. Select Fidelity FX CAS. This gives a nice balance between sharp visuals and performance. AMD FSR3 frame generation. Turn this off unless you're specifically using it and notice better results. VRAM scale target. Set it to 80. This helps manage your video memory usage without going overboard. Variable rate shading. Turn this off for more consistent visual quality. Texture resolution. Set this to normal. It gives a good balance of visuals and performance. Texture filter anisotropic. Also normal. No need to go higher unless you've got extra performance headroom. Depth of field. Turn this off. It just adds blur and doesn't help in competitive gameplay. Detail quality. Set it to low. We want to focus on performance here. Particle resolution, very low. These effects aren't important and just cost frames. Bullet impacts, turn this off unless you really want to see them. Persistent effects, off as well. Just more clutter on screen. Shader quality, if you're expecting the best performance, set this to low. This setting affects the overall quality of elements inside the game, like trees, mud, rocks, and similar environments you'll be able to see a lot more detail with higher settings. But if you can afford to sacrifice around five to 10 FPS, then go ahead and set it to medium. There's no real reason to go higher than that. On-demand texture streaming, set this to minimal. This reduces background downloads and saves performance. Allocated texture cache size, set it to 16. That's enough without taking up unnecessary space. Download limits, turn this off. We don't want any restrictions interfering while you're playing. Local texture streaming quality. Set this to normal. It gives decent visuals without hitting performance too hard. Shadow quality. Set this to low. Shadows are very performance heavy and don't help much in gameplay. Screen space shadows. Turn this off. Occlusion and screen space lighting. Set this off as well. These are extra visual effects that aren't needed. Screen space reflections. Turn this off. Again, purely visual, we're focusing on frames here. Static reflection quality, set to low. Tessellation, turn this off. It's a heavy setting that doesn't impact gameplay. Volumetric quality, set this to low. Keeps things smooth during fog, smoke, or weather effects. Deferred physics quality, turn this off. Weather grid volumes quality, off. No need for extra weather rendering. Water quality, set this to off too. We're not here to admire water, we're here to win. All right, now let's move on to the view tab. Motion reduction preset. Set this to off. Field of view. Set it to 120 for maximum visibility. You'll see way more of your surroundings, which gives a huge advantage. ADS field of view. Set to affected. This keeps your view consistent when aiming down sights. Weapon field of view. Set to wide. 
it moves the weapon further from the screen and gives you more peripheral vision. Third-person field of view. Set this to 90 for the widest view possible in third-person modes. Vehicle field of view, set to wide as well for better awareness while driving. World motion blur, turn this off. It just makes things harder to see when moving. Weapon motion blur, also off. We want everything clear at all times. First person camera movement, set this to least 50%, reduces unnecessary screen shake. Third person camera movement, also least 50%, keeps the camera stable and easier to control. Inverted flashbang, set this to off. This keeps the flashbang effect the default way. If you turn it on, it inverts the screen colors instead of turning it white, but most players find the default more natural and easier to recover from. Now let's move on to the audio tab. Most of these settings are up to your personal preference, but I'll highlight the ones you really should change. Gameplay music volume. Set this to zero. You don't need music distracting you while you're in the middle of a game. Dialogue volume. Set this to 30. This allows you to hear important in-game dialogue without it overpowering the sound effects. Effects volume. Set this to 100. You want to hear footsteps, gunshots, and other important game sounds clearly for better situational awareness. Cinematic music volume. Set this to zero as well. Cinematic music can be distracting during intense gameplay moments. Reduce tinnitus sound. Set this to on. This will reduce the ringing sound in your ears that can be triggered by explosions or other loud sounds in the game. It's a helpful setting to prevent the effect from interfering with your gameplay, especially during intense moments. Go to the Interface tab, then move to Readability, and then to Color Customization. Here, change both Team and Party to the same color. This way, when you're playing with random players in-game, your party members and random players won't be shown with different colors. This helps you easily identify who's on your team. Next, go to the Color Filter section below and select Filter 2. Then set the color filter target to both. This combination should make your visuals much clearer. Both world color intensity and interface color intensity should be set to 100. Now let's go back to the gameplay HUD section. Head to crosshair and set the center dot scale to larger. After that, if you'd like, feel free to change your crosshair color to whatever you prefer. Once you've applied all these settings, go to the display tab and click on restart shader preloading. This is essential so make sure you do it. After that, restart your game to apply all the changes properly. Next, we'll edit a few game config files. Trust me, this will definitely improve your game's performance. First, open your Documents folder. Then open the Call of Duty folder. Next, go to the Players folder. Here, you'll see a lot of files, but the one you need to focus on is this specific file. Usually, it's the middle file among the three. To confirm this, right-click on the file and select Properties. Now, look for the txt0 file. Confirm it and open it with Notepad. Now, press Ctrl plus F to open the search bar and type Corpse. Now, find the line for maximum number of AI corpses and set this number to 0. Next, type Blood, then change Limit Blood Effects to True. Next, type Sun Shadow, then change Static Sun Shadow Moment Clip Map Resolution to 0. Next, type Texture Filtering, then change Texture Filtering Quality Level from 4x to 2x. Next, type Heaps, then change Enables Optimizations when Resizable Bar is supported by uploading more data to VRAM to False. Next, type Catmull, then change Catmull Clark Subdivision Level to 0. Next, type Renderer, then find Thread Count for handling the job queue under Renderer Worker Count. What you need to change here is the number of CPU cores you have. Always enter one less than the total number of cores you have. For example, if you have six cores, you should enter five here. You can check the number of cores you have by looking at your task manager. Next, make sure to save all the settings you've changed in the file. If you didn't catch that, don't worry. I've added all the download links for these settings down in the description. Just grab them from there. Now, let's see how to overclock your controller. This will help you achieve zero input lag, giving you a serious advantage. If you're a PC player, this is something you definitely need to do. Now, go to this site and download the zip file. The link is in the description. After downloading it, unzip the file.
Next, open the driver folder, then open setup. Now, make sure all devices are selected. Your controller must be plugged in at this point. Select your controller from the list, then click Install Service. If there's no pop-up, you're good to go. But if you get a pop-up with an error message, you'll need to disable safe mode in the BIOS. I'll show you how to fix that at the end, but for now, just click Yes and proceed. Now, tick the filter on Device and Install Service. Select the highest one. For this controller, it's 8000. Then click Install Service. After that, unplug your controller and plug it back in. It should show as Green Yes 8001. If it appears red, don't worry. I'll provide two solutions that will definitely fix the issue. Now open your Windows Security. Go to Core Isolation and disable it. This step is a must. It removes one of the blocks that can stop your controller from getting overclocked. If it still didn't work after that, then you'll need to go into your BIOS and disable Secure Boot. After overclocking, you can check if the input delay on the controller has become zero through the DS4 Windows software. If you're using DS4 Windows, I've dropped a fully optimized config file for it. Link is down below in the description. Now I'm gonna show you how to add that config file into DS4 Windows. Open DS4 Windows and go to the Profile tab. Click on Import. You can download the file from the description below. Now select it and open it. Next. Go to the Controllers tab and select the file you imported here. Now you're good to go. Now let me show you how to update your controller. Get the link to this software from the description and download it. Then install and open it. Mine is already up to date, so it shows like this, but you'll definitely see an update available for yours. Just click Update from here. After that, you can simply uninstall the software. You won't need it anymore once the update is done. Now, open the NVIDIA app and go to the Drivers tab. Make sure Game Ready Driver is selected, then check if it's up to date. If there's a new update, go ahead and update it. Next, go to the System and Performance tab. Here you can auto-tune your GPU. I've already done it, and here are my GPU tuning details after the process. For you, all you need to do is turn it on. It will take a little while for this to complete, as it gathers details to perfectly match your hardware. Once it's done, restart your computer. If you want to get the most FPS and optimize your Windows for gaming, don't miss this video. Drop a like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.